Yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Plays and Fades Week 12 edition. We have a lot to get to today. Let's not waste any time. We'll get started with the first quarterback that I really like this week, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is playing on the road against the San Francisco 49ers. The Niners are one of the worst pass defenses in the NFL. Russell Wilson is the only source of offense that the Seattle Seahawks could generate nowadays. Also provides rushing upside, averaging close to 40 yards a game this year. Despite being 8,600 on FanDuel, I think he's underpriced with how much usage you're getting out of this guy. Next up, the running back that I like this week, Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley last week laid an egg, 13 points on FanDuel. You might be thinking that's a pretty solid game, but not when you were paying over 9K for Todd Gurley. You need close to 20 point upside from him to pay off his salary. One of my favorite things to do in DFS is target running backs at home as a favorite. And they're playing the New Orleans Saints who just got gashed by Samaj P. Ryan last week. Todd Gurley is one of the few running backs in the NFL that play all three downs. I think this is an ideal bounce back spot for Todd Gurley. Next up, the running back that I like this week, depending on the status of the running back ahead of him, Tevin Coleman. If Devontae Freeman is out at 6,200, I think Tevin Coleman is a locked and cocked for me. He saw 20 carries against the Seahawks on Monday Night Football. Atlanta is also a big favorite at home. As I mentioned before with Todd Gurley, one of my favorite things to do is take the running back at home as a favorite. Tevin Coleman, especially if Freeman is out, must play despite the ownership. Next up, one of the three wide receivers that I like this week, Kenny Stills. The Dolphins are traveling to New England and they're close to 16 point underdogs. What does that tell you? It's probably gonna mean that Miami has to throw from behind. Since the start of the 2016 season, anytime Kenny Stills has Matt Moore at quarterback, he's one of the best receivers in football and you would have never guessed. In the games in which Matt Moore is the quarterback for Kenny Stills, Kenny Stills is top five in PPR scoring leagues, averaging close to 19 points per game. When Kenny Stills does not have Matt Moore at the helm, he's averaging eight points a game in PPR leagues. At 5,600 on FanDuel, he might be a little chalky, but he's gonna let you do a lot of other crazy shit with your lineup. Next up, the other wide receiver I like this week. Nice little stack with the quarterback we like, Doug Baldwin. Doug Baldwin on Monday Night Football in a great matchup against the Falcons. He needed that touchdown to save his night, but still laid an egg compared to what you were paying for him. Now he's going up against the San Francisco 49ers who are in the bottom five in DVOA against slot wide receivers. Doug Baldwin lines up close to 80% of the time out of the slot position, either left or right of the formation. Next up, the last wide receiver I really like this week, D.D. Westbrook. So if you've been following my podcast, D-Generation Bets, every Friday I have an episode called DFS Fridays where we break down pretty much the entire slate. And if you haven't been listening, what the f***? The Jaguars are going on the road to play the Arizona Cardinals. Marquise Lee, the number one receiver on the Jaguars, is probably going to draw up Patrick Peterson leaving D.D. Westbrook one-on-one -on -one coverage with the number two corner on the Arizona Cardinals. The Arizona Cardinals are one of the worst teams at defending number two wide receivers. D.D. Westbrook last week saw six targets right off the bat. He also predicted that his first game in the NFL, he's gonna have 200 yards. Not even close last week, but hey, maybe this is the week. D.D. Westbrook is 4,900 on FanDuel. And based off matchup and the upside, this could be a smash play here. Next up, the tight end I like this week, Tyler Croft, Cincinnati Bengals. I'm gonna keep it simple. Any tight end against the Browns, you play them. Next up, the defense I like this week, the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles defense features one of the best defensive lines in football, according to Pro Football Focus, ranked in the top five in quarterback hurries, pressures, and sacks this year. Going up against a rookie quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, I love the Eagles this week. Moving on over to the fade section, the quarterback that I'm staying away from this week, Big Ben Roethlisberger. Now we know all about the Steelers at home and the narratives that are attached to Big Ben in that offense. But here's the thing. The Steelers are a 14 point favorite on Sunday Night Football against the Green Bay Packers. If I'm taking anybody from that Steeler offense, it's Le'Veon Bell. I think the Steelers are gonna be up early in this game to the point where they're just gonna be running the clock out. Big Ben is coming off a monster game on Thursday Night Football. A lot of people might chase that game log. I'm staying away from it. Next up, the running back I'm fading this week, Marshawn Lynch. I don't know about you guys, but watching the Raiders, I kind of feel like they've waved the white flag on this season. Seems like they're not playing for Jack Del Rio. And Marshawn Lynch is losing snaps week in, week out. I'm staying away from Marshawn Lynch. Next up, the wide receiver I'm fading this week, Antonio Brown. 9,600 on FanDuel. In a game in which the Steelers are expected to be up by close to two touchdowns, definitely not going there. 9,600 in a tournament, you need close to 30 points. If you strongly believe that AB is going to get 30 points on FanDuel, by all means, it's never a bad idea to play a guy of his magnitude. 
I'm just not going there. Next up, the other wide receiver I'm staying away from this week, Sammy Watkins. Not only does Watkins draw a tough matchup against the Saints, but a lot of people I think are going to go to Watkins this week because Robert Woods is out for about a couple of weeks. I don't think beating the Saints defense is targeting their wide receivers on the outside. I think you want to pick on the corners inside with the tight end and your slot receivers. I'm staying away from Watkins. I know around the industry, he's already being talked up a little bit. But just don't go there. Don't waste your money or your time. Moving on over to the tight end I'm staying away from this week. Might be a surprise to you. Rob Gronkowski. Watching New England, I've noticed something with them. I feel like they're not utilizing Gronk as they did in the past. He's pretty much getting all his work inside the red zone. And for the most part, he hasn't scored a touchdown in the last couple of weeks. Over his last four games, Gronk's best game has been a 14-point outing against the Chargers. Also the last time he scored a touchdown. We are seeing a price discount on Gronk this week. And it might be a little appealing to you because this is a guy that we usually see in the 8K range or higher. But I just think that this is going to be a Deion Lewis, Rex Burkhead, and James White kind of game. Last but not least, the defense I'm fading this week, the Denver Broncos. The Bronco defense has looked a little sluggish. Not so much a no-fly zone anymore, and they have been pretty stout against the run. One of the main reasons why I'm also fading Marshawn Lynch. But I'm just not buying Denver, and for some reason, I just have a feeling that Derek Carr might have himself a bounce-back game this week. So I'm staying away from the Denver Broncos. Before we wrap up this video, I want to give you guys a nice tournament play that I think is going to go under the radar. A little bonus this week. I'm going to give you guys an unconventional stack to play in your tournaments. Marcus Mariota, Jacoby Brissett, Corey Davis and T.Y. Hilton. I will play one of the quarterbacks with both pass catchers, and then on another lineup, run it back with the other quarterback and the same pass catchers. And here's the logic behind it. Every week there's a game on the Vegas board that goes over the game total. I think this is gonna be it. The Titans are one of the worst teams at defending the wide receiver in fantasy this year, and the Colts defense is just trash. The Colts are a better team at home than they are on the road as far as offensive production goes. The matchups are just great across the board, both for Jacoby Brissett, who does play better in Indianapolis, alongside with T.Y. Hilton, who dudded the last time that they played the Tennessee Titans, but that's because they played on the grass in Nashville. In the dome, in any dome, T.Y. Hilton is the truth. Remember last time we talked up T.Y. Hilton? Houston Texans. Corey Davis, last two games, 18 total targets. He got stopped on the goal line. Could have been a touchdown. I think that this is a nice little unconventional stack for your tournaments. And if you like what you're listening, and if you want to hear more about DFS, check out Degeneration Bets, DFS Fridays, every Friday. More in-depth dive on the plays. Enjoy the weekend. Good luck. We'll catch you next week.